Hello and welcome to Dub Biology, Apes Lessons to Go. In this video, we'll be exploring acid rain. In the 1980s, acid rain received a lot of media attention. Although we don't hear a lot about acid rain today, since climate change has taken kind of center stage, it's still a problem that deserves our attention. Acid rain is kind of a misnomer because acid uh, deposition can take both wet and dry forms. Any kind of uh, precipitation that has a pH lower than 5.6 is considered to be acidic. Acid deposition will originate from sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide particles that come from the burning of fossil fuel, like nitric oxides that are produced uh, from uh, gasoline-powered automobiles, and sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide that comes from the burning of coal in power plants. Now, once these particles are emitted into the air, they're going to form sulfate and nitrate particles. Now, these particles can travel long distances on wind currents. Um, as they're traveling, they can form dry deposits like sulfur dioxide gas and particles of sulfate and nitrate salts. If these particles combine with water vapor, uh, they can form acids like sulfuric acid and nitric acid, which will then fall as acid rain or acid snow. When uh, these acidic depositions encounter the environment, uh, if it is a buffered environment that might contain limestone, um, then it's going to be a little more resilient. Uh, if you have a um, environment that is low in uh, buffers, then it is going to acidify. If we look at a map that shows the average pH of acid deposition across the United States, we see that the, the areas of greatest uh, pH depression takes place in locations where we have a lot of coal burning and industrial plants that are producing um, those chemicals that contribute to acid deposition. Now, acid rain's pH and the chemicals that cause it are monitored by two networks that are supported by the Environmental Protection Agency. The National Atmospheric Deposition Program will measure wet deposition, and the Clean Air Status and Trends Network, or CASNET, will measure dry deposition. Acid deposition uh, affects both our economic and environmental lives. Acid deposition can lead to poor forest and crop health due to the acidification of the soil. Acid rain and acid snow can actually kill the nutrient-producing microorganisms that do things like uh, fix uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere. Acid deposition can acidify lakes and streams. This can lead to the death of aquatic life, uh, like trout and bass, which have a very low range of tolerance when it comes to changes in pH. The acidity of the environment can leach heavy metals like mercury out of the soil, causing toxic levels to build up uh, in the environment and accumulate in the fish we eat. The Food and Drug Administration uh, recommends that young children and pregnant uh, women minimize the amount of certain fish that we eat uh, to prevent the buildup of those toxic heavy metals um, into the young uh, bodies of uh, children and developing uh, babies. The acidity can leach essential plant nutrients like calcium and magnesium from the soil, reducing their productivity and the ability for the soils to buffer and neutralize acids. So, what can we do about acid rain? Well, in the 1990s, an amendment to the Clean Air Act called for a reduction in sulfur emissions. Unfortunately, this proved to be less effective than hoped as acid rain still persists today. This is largely due to two reasons. One, the reductions in sulfur emissions were probably not great enough. And there were no call for reductions in nitrogen emissions, which are also implicated in forming acid rain. So today we have two major options, with prevention and cleanup. To prevent the formation of acid deposition, we can reduce air pollution by improving energy efficiency and increasing our use of renewable resources. If we're going to use carbon-containing fuels, we could use things like natural gas or low-sulfur coal to reduce the amount of particulates that can contribute to acid deposition. The other option is cleanup. 
certain environments that are already acidified can be mitigated by uh, using things like limestone to neutralize those acidified lakes and to neutralize the acid in soils to kind of encourage uh, better uh, plant growth.